we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is How Hacks Work. This episode is all about extreme transport and we've put together a feast of hacks from all over the world to show you how to make getting from A to B a lot more fun. To me, this looks like one of those old-fashioned tin space toys from the 1950s. It's awesome. We've got all the extreme transport advice you're ever going to need. From a gnarly way to travel in a flood to extreme excavator acrobatics. And in our epic hack, you'll be seeing how talking a lot of hot air really can give you some impressive results. What was it like driving that? It was absolutely insane. First up is one extreme transport event that you're unlikely to see in the Olympics anytime soon, a motor-powered tiller race. Our plucky competitors run, hop or hang on for dear life whilst being propelled by some serious engine power. Ready, steady, plow! The thing about these tillers is they have these barbed legs which dig into the soil. And when you've got loose, rubbly soil, these sort of things are great for getting maximum traction. I mean, they're basically just like swords on wheels. Was that just a stab in the dark, Ali? There are obviously many factors that determine how quickly one of these things goes. One thing you could do to try and change your speed is change the size of the blades at the front. As you make those bigger and bigger, it's effectively like having a larger wheel. It means that you travel further for every revolution of the engine. But when you put a giant motor on this thing, you are going to fly. Sure, you'd probably be safer on a scooter, but this extreme transportation hack puts the excitement back into travel. It's a hit all the way! When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But when life gives you flooded streets, take a leaf out of this thrill seeker's book. He didn't let a few thousand gallons of water dampen his spirits. Instead, he came up with his own extreme mode of travel to take to the streets on a surfboard. I don't think this is the best idea in a street because you don't know what's underneath you. If you're suddenly going to hit a drain, then you're going down. Don't be such a spoil sport. So if you want to stay on the surface, you need some speed to get you going. The front of the board needs to be sticking up slightly, and what you're doing is forcing water underneath the board at a speed to try and generate a force that will keep you above the surface. Who needs a beach when you've got three inches of water and a friend with a speedboat? An extremely ingenious hack! Hit! Checked your mirrors. Let off the handbrake. Loaded yourself with so many boxes you can't see where you're going. Somewhere underneath all that is a tricyclist wishing they bought themselves a van instead of 200 styrofoam boxes. Oh well, you live and learn. This is a perfect example of a can-do attitude. And the genius of the idea is they're all styrofoam boxes, so if you have a crash, you're immediately well protected. It's like the biggest uh, cycle helmet. A helmet that big might even fit on your head, George. I assume he doesn't actually need to carry all those things. If he did need to carry them, though, A for effort and for bravery, because I think he actually accelerates out into the middle of a road because he can't see anything. I'm glad you find it all amusing, Ali. The key when you're trying to overload a vehicle to this ridiculous degree, what you need to do is make sure that whenever you add a box on one side, you add a box of a similar weight, a similar distance away on the other side. And that means that if you average the weight, you don't fall over. Yeah, or you could just hire a lorry. Call me boring, but the only way this rogue road user is ever going to be a hit is with another car. An impressive yet diabolically dangerous miss. It's all about health and safety in the workplace these days, isn't it? Luckily for us, these hack heroes decided to flout all the rules and take excavating to the extreme. 
The thing which strikes me about this is how long did it take them to figure out that that was how you did it? There must have been loads of times where they just hit a wall or someone fell out or the whole thing just swerved off the road. Too right, Ali. I bet the outtakes room is a sight to behold. It can't be practical doing that, can it? I mean, you're going to get dizzy, you're going to get sick, the inside of the cab's going to get sick all over it. Sometimes you've got to suffer for your art, though, George. You've got the whole weight of the digger on one side, the extended bucket on the other, and that means that not only are you balanced against gravity, you're not falling over, but as you spin, then the centrifugal force in both directions is equal, and that means that you don't spin in either direction either. Whilst we assume what you're saying here, Andrew, is basically that wheelies are really cool, that doesn't explain how we can actually perform these extreme transport acrobatics ourselves. While most of us probably don't have an excavator on hand to pop a wheelie, the same rules apply to motorbikes. If you blast up the power to the rear wheel, you create massive forces that push backwards and down on the ground. Luckily, the ground also pushes back on you with equal and opposite forces, rocketing you forwards, which is why the front end of the bike starts to feel a little lighter the more you accelerate. With enough power and weight near the back of the bike, the ground pushing up can be enough to start lifting the weight of the bike so that the whole thing begins to tilt backwards. After that, it's a balancing act to make sure you have enough power to keep the bike tilted back, but not too much to get the full weight of the bike past the back wheel. Definitely not one for amateurs. I've got to take my hat off to these extreme transport hacking heroes. This is not a trick for the faint-hearted, but it's a really impressive hit. So far, we've shown you how to turn a simple gardening implement into an extreme speed machine, street surf your way to the store when driving just isn't an option, and pop a wheelie whilst driving an excavator. Coming up, we introduce a sophisticated hack for making train journeys extremely comfortable. And a killer way to travel on water. We all dream of buying a new car, but not many of us can afford to splash out on something top of the range. This high-tech hacker didn't let his budget stop him. Instead, he decided to build an extremely small yet perfectly formed car himself for a steal. Best of all, he'll also never have a problem parking again. To me, this looks like one of those old-fashioned tin space toys from the 1950s. It's awesome. This hack relies on an internal combustion engine. These are the engines in traditional cars and they're powered by petrol or diesel. In an internal combustion engine, the fuel is sucked into a chamber. It's then compressed and exploded, and this explosion pushes a force onto a piston, and the force of that piston can then drive crankshaft mechanisms to drive the car forward. A few difficulties when miniaturising engines is they tend to get very hot, and also you tend to generate less power from a smaller engine. So, when you condense it all down, you have to have very sophisticated ways of cooling things down and getting the air into the engine so it can keep turning. This guy clearly has nailed it. Thanks to this compact yet classic speedster, this guy will never have to give his friends a lift again. And I bet it's cheap on petrol too. An absolute smash of a hit. Ever seen a killer whale gracefully slicing through the water and thought, I wish I could do that? But our next extreme transport hacker turned that dream into a reality by building his very own motor-powered killer whale. It really reminded me of the fish-shaped submarines in the series Stingray that I used to watch when I was a kid. Imagine having one of these to play around with. Yeah, it'd be a bit of a step up from a yo-yo, wouldn't it? It would be a great uh, vehicle to turn up on a first date. I'd say, I'll meet you by the docks. How will I know it's you? You'll know. You'll know it's me. Yeah, unless it actually ends up terrifying said date to death. You can see that its tail is fixed here, and in fact it's fixed so much that it hydroplanes a little bit, which is when you basically form a hydrofoil in the water. A killer whale would be moving its tail and that would create the drive um, through pressure waves being pushed through the water, whereas this clearly has a propeller somewhere. Most of us know what a propeller is, but how about an impeller? Got your head spinning? Well, let's try and clear things up for you then. If you're up for some watery shenanigans, you'll be needing an engine cutout for your turbocharged aquatic adventures. Your best bet is a pump jet. Unlike a traditional propeller used to move air, this type of engine uses a much smaller and compacted version called an impeller. Like a fan, its angled arms scoop water and smash it backwards to create a thrust. And by putting your impeller in a case, all that water is channeled into an even smaller tube, making it travel even faster. 
but the impeller's talents don't end there, as this system also creates a suction effect, a lot like a vacuum cleaner, drawing in more water to make the water jet out of the back even faster. This thing moves impressively fast. Apparently it can do 60 miles an hour above the water and 40 miles an hour beneath. And obviously that's quick enough that if you suddenly pull up, you've got the momentum to just jump out of the water and breach like a real killer whale. With transport that looks this good, you're bound to have a whale of a time. A sub-aqua hack hit. Not all extreme travel hacks can be as easy on the eye and streamlined as the last one. Some of them, quite simply, look like massive can openers on wheels. It feels like they've found some sort of old discarded uh, moon lander and they've just kind of bodged it into a working car. Imagine what the aliens in the back must be wondering. This is a case of a fan-powered car. And generally speaking, you only see these on boats because on a boat, you've got less friction to contend with than you do with the wheels of a car and the weight of a car. So while this is a great idea, it might not be fantastic if you're looking to go anywhere quick. It's got that sort of spiky nose cone and that's originally done to basically decrease uh, wind resistance, right? So things are more aerodynamic. But actually, interestingly, the most aerodynamic shape for passing through air is actually a teardrop. So if they had designed it like that, I'd have a lot more respect for them. This hack loses too many points for presentation. Sure, you get somewhere quickly, but you'd probably be laughed out of the parking lot. This is a resounding miss. Over at Hack HQ, Mike's going to be showing his trusty guinea pig, Marcus, that sometimes all you need to produce an extreme travel hack is a bit of fresh air. And a cotton wool bud, obviously. What time do you call this? Mate, that company car you gave me is hardly going to break a land speed record. It's really not, but lucky for you, this is our extreme transport hack. And I might have something up my sleeve to, you know, soup up that pedal power you've got. So what are you going to do? You're going to turbocharge me, slap a rocket on me, fire me into the stratosphere, jet power style. I wouldn't give him any ideas if I were you, Marcus. Not a bad idea. But I thought about other engines. So I've got a tube here and I've got a piston. And did you know that when air is pressurised, it heats up? So what I can do is I can ram that piston into the tube and bring it up to a temperature where it will auto-ignite that cotton wool, which is about 400 degrees. So that is really hot, obviously hot enough to set fire to that cotton wool. Yes, Marcus, 400 degrees is generally considered pretty hot. Exactly, but it only burns for a fraction of a second. So I've got cotton wool and I take a tiny, tiny bit of it and I place it inside this tube, just on top here. So that's like half the amount of cotton wool that there is on a cotton bud, right? <laughs> oh yeah, this tiny amount. Yep. Right, put that on there. And then I put the tube over the top. Right. And then I've got this piston, and the piston's got an O-ring on it. So the O-ring's there to form a pressurised seal. So when I slam this down inside the tube, the O-ring seals itself against the side of the tube, pressing all of that air molecules together, heating it up. And I have to make sure that it doesn't escape. None of the air can get out. OK. OK, we're translating that to mean I've got no idea what you're on about, Mike. You've got to be really quick with this. It's a short, sharp action slamming this down. So are you ready for it? Right? <laughs> See that? I mean, it flashed for a fraction of a second, but it looks amazing. So that's nuts. So just using air pressure, you managed to reach a temperature of 400 degrees and well, set fire to that. Well over 400 degrees. And this is exactly how a diesel engine works. The piston slams down inside the cylinder, causing all of those air molecules to heat up auto-igniting the diesel, and it slams it back up, cranking the engine. Now, this happens at about 400 times a minute in a single cylinder. So if you think you've got six cylinders in there, or more, it's happening really quickly. So you're going to make a massive see-through diesel engine, put gallons of diesel in it and fire me off, right? Well, I was going to, but I quite like your jet engine idea. You've got no one to blame but yourself, Marcus. We'll leave Mike there and come back to him later to see what sort of jet-propelled chaos he has in store for poor Marcus. Still to come, a handcart hack that will turn heads and an extreme super scooter built from scratch. We've all been on public transport during rush hour after a hard day's work, praying for a free seat. Well, this cool customer in China decided she'd had enough of her tedious commute and brought her own swing to the party. 
top hacking. If it was me, I'd go one step further and I would reinforce the seat of my trousers and then put ropes through the belt loops and then hang myself off my own trousers. There's a site that will definitely clear any carriage. I find the best way for me to get a seat on uh, a train, if I want a seat and it's a bit crowded, is I just do that and people think I'm pregnant. You probably don't even have to do that, do you, George? The way swinging works is essentially by transferring your body weight. What you're doing is you're swinging your legs backwards and forwards and you're changing your centre of mass slightly. So when you move your legs back, you generate some momentum. This extremely clever transport hack is as ingenious as it is simple. Seriously, if you haven't started Googling where you can get one of these, then there's no hope for the world. A certifiable hack! Hit! Next up in the world of extreme transport hacks, this handcart hero is blasting along like he's sitting on top of a rocket. His trainers are going to wear out pretty quickly, though. He's using his feet more than Fred Flintstone. This is all about the balance of the car, a bit like a seesaw. You've got the wheels there and you've got a big counterweight at the back. The weight needs to be heavy at the back to balance his weight at the front. This means that if he kicks off a little bit, a light jump means he'll hover in the air for a little while and eventually come back down. Looks like he's got invisible horses pulling him along. Shows a bit of ingenuity and it means that he can basically fly along the main road as best he can. An impressive use of equipment, but nowhere near as extreme as some of the other hacks we've seen in this show. The jury's out on this one. What are your plans on retirement? Watch some TV? Sleep more? Not this guy. He's put his carpentry skills to incredible use to invent his own extreme mode of transport. Looks great, eh? It looks like a fun thing. I love, in the clip, seeing him make it. He's got such a professional setup. The, uh, the, the, the clamp, his foot, uh, the workbench, his chair. I wonder if he retired or if he was uh, let go. He's actually using a very similar system to what we would use in rollerblading or ice skating. So it's just a movement of going from side to side, um, which actually is bit by bit giving energy to um, the actual mechanism. So in terms of physics, he's using Newton's third law of physics, which basically says that every action has a reaction. So if you push a wheel against the floor, then the floor will be pushing back the wheel with the same force that you are pushing it, which means that the wheel, which can actually move, will feel that force and keep moving forward. So every time you do that, you are giving energy Energy by actually receiving the energy off the floor on each side. Does anyone else want to make a bet on how quickly it collapses? No, just me. OK. Granted, it's not exactly high spec, but the effort this guy has gone to to become part of the extreme transport fraternity warms the heart. I'm going to say hit for our final extreme transport hack of the show. Over to Hack HQ. The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong for Mike to handle. And with his trusty guinea pig, Marcus, he'll try anything so that you don't have to. Earlier in the show, Mike used little more than fresh air and pistons to show us how car engines work. Now for our epic hack, he's once again taking it up a gear with an extreme engine that sounds as terrifying as it looks. What is this? This is my jet-powered go-kart. <laughs> that is incredible. I've never seen an engine like this in my life. Well, this isn't like a normal jet engine that you see in, in aeroplanes, a jet turbine. This is a pulse jet engine. And it is loud. So how does it work? Right, so you've got a combustion chamber, the bigger bit in it, and then you've got a feed of propane gas, so this is the fuel. It mixes with air that's drawn in through the front here. Yep. It hits that combustion chamber, and you've got all the mixture of explosive gases that are ignited by that little igniter, just a simple gas hob igniter. That produces a massive explosion that forces these compressed gases out through the smaller tube, making thrust that sends you that way. That sounds awesome, but if there's an explosion going on here, how do you stop it from coming out all over the back of your neck? That's actually not a bad question from him. That, that's this valve here. It's got little springs. It's spring metal. It lets the air in one way, but when it explodes, it closes up quickly, causing the explosion to only go out that way. And it does that 80 times a second. So all of that happens 80 times a second? 80 explosions a second, yeah. It's incredible. So in, inside, you have the explosion. And with an explosion, you get a vacuum behind it. So it sucks in the air. The fuel is automatically going in there, so you're constantly pumping it with fuel. And because it's so hot, it auto-ignites. 
So it's kind of like a chain reaction It's a then. chain reaction. So the only thing that stops this is shutting off the fuel. Guys, we're missing out on an opportunity to sing some Diana Ross here. Right. OK. <laughs> oh, and the brake. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said it's really loud. I can't wait to hear it. How do we fire it up? Right, so we need the leaf blower. Right. And what I need you to do is, when we start it up, I need you to tickle the air into that valve. Tickle the tickle air? Tickle it in, All yeah, right. so we can't have too much. And then I will tickle the fuel in with the sparker going, and the first couple of bangs will be really loud. All right. And once it gets going, you'll know. Bring the leaf blower away, it'll be auto. It'll, it will just keep going. All right, let's do this, then. Let's do it. All right. All right, start with that. Thank you very much. All right, so if you just stay here, tickling that in. This is definitely the most elaborate way I've ever seen to start an engine. What's wrong with a key in the ignition? I said, guys, what's wrong with a simple key in... <laughs> See what I mean? Loud. That was loud. <laughs> is Marcus just repeating, Mike, or has he actually gone deaf? And it gets really hot. You can feel that heat radiating off of it. Yeah, I feel like I get a tan off it. <laughs> <laughs> so what we've got to do is start it up. It's quite difficult to start up. When it's started and it gets hot, then I'll throttle it up. But if I jump in, you've got to jump in because I've set a cone over there and it's a race. All right, so you're going to give me a little bit of a head start then, right? Maybe. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Let's do it. Right. And they're off. Well, I'd say Mike's buggy is a roaring success. Unlucky, Marcus. Looks like Marcus isn't the only one who's terrified of being flame grilled by Mike's new hot rod. <laughs> Mike, that was an absolutely epic extreme transport hack. What was it like driving that? It was insane. I mean, this was, <laughs> this was bouncing around all over the place. That was blowing at 80 times a second behind me. Absolutely insane. The noise it made was crazy. I need one of those on my car. Well, let's get back to the workshop, build you a bigger one. All right, I'll meet you there. Back to the workshop, boys, and keep your eyes peeled for those angry cows on the way. It's time to fire up the pistons to 400 degrees to signal the end of extreme transport hacks. See you again soon for some more high-quality, hilarious hacking. Hacking.